that really lights me up when we have that human connection on a spirit heart to heart level when you know people often talk about heart to heart but also when it's on the spirit level that's just lights me up the most hey i'm your host ronya sakata queen of joy that's how my friends call me talking to you from zurich switzerland I want to make this world more joyful and playful and colorful because we don't have a guarantee for tomorrow. So let's enjoy today. Will you join me? I'm all in. I founded the Joy Academy for exactly that reason. And on the Let's Create Joy podcast, we talk visions, dreams, self-care, habits, challenges, creating joy and much more in motivational solo episodes at the beginning of the month and inspiring talks with my wonderful guests. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at joyismycompass for getting fun and tangible daily inspiration for our monthly topic. You make the difference and you are the most important person in your life. Yes, we can live our best lives right now while we have our big vision in our head and heart. Let's dive right in. Enjoy! Welcome, Ramiro, to the Let's Create Joy podcast. It's so good to have you here. As always, I ask first, who are you? And I'm happy when you introduce yourself. Who are you? Who are who are you and what do you do and what brings you joy and how do you create joy? Because we don't have to wait for joy to appear in our everyday life. We can create it. And that's so juicy. And I'm so happy that you are here. The mic is yours. Thank you, Rania. I love how you roll the R's. Now, three questions. Who am I? What brings me joy? How do I create joy? Who am I? That's always the deep question. Who am I? I am a creative spirit here in human body called Ramiro right now. And that is, um, so (laughs) that's very vague, but like on the meta level. And so how do I uh, create joy? What brings me to how to create joy through that creative expression of spirit? What brings me joy is mostly connecting with other people, other spirits, other souls. And that really lights me up when we have that human connection on a spirit heart to heart level. When, you know, people often talk about heart to heart, but also when it's on the spirit level, that's just lights me up the most because, you know, so often uh, people who do cover up their spirit and have that superficial reaction, um, conversation, interaction, where we talk about the weather so what did you eat today um what's the weather like over there and to me i can have those when we also have the deeper human connections but whenever we find that i experience that i love that the most that's the thing that lights me up the most and that also kind of answers how do i create joy i call that really adding into the spirit uh, energy and that potential when we look at the three bodies, like the physical body, right? And we have the energy body, and then we have the spirit body. When those three are in sync and aligned, that's when that spirit and that creative expression and that creative energy gets channeled through from there, through all the bodies into the physical expression. And that's really how I create joy. That's on the, again, on the meta level. So what does that look like? That looks like um, especially paying attention to being very intuitive, but also paying attention to my emotions. And that means uh, another description level of joy is when you find that peace and calm, that even the bad negative emotions, you still enjoy those shitty emotions, right? So that is... uh, that's the, that's the the two answers to that question. And what do I do? So that's what I do. I my aim is to all to express my spirit creatively in this human vessel. And one of the ways that I mainly love to do that is through story, 
I am a storyteller. I am a story guide. I'm a teacher. I'm I, I create lyrics. So uh, so songwriting is one of the things I'm getting into. Really becoming a vocalist, creating wow. music. Yeah. So that is one of the ways that I creatively uh, do that. Have that spirit, creative expression in the body through story, basically. And people who are um, more into, let's talk about the weather. Are you like challenging them and starting a conversation about energy body and spiritual body? Or are you holding back this part of you because you are like assuming it's too much or it's overwhelming or they don't get it? So I don't talk about that. Or is that like a different different kind of conversation like different universes you are you are moving around you know you started now right away with that topic and it's very deep and I think people who get it get it but other people prefer to start a conversation about the weather and you said ah that's difficult for me to talk about the weather just let let just uh, as a it could be the weather the food or whatever you know how do you How do you choose when to talk about this topic, which is like about higher conscious and, and spirit, energy, physical body? And when do you just go with the weather conversation? Great question. So you're basically asking, um, do I always go in, what's your purpose? What's your ambition, right? Or do I... Uh, just only keep it to limit to no or we, we only get to talk about the weather so I'm not going to even expose that side I have done both approaches and I actually now I'm being more intuitive with it so when I was first discovering my own truth my own purpose as I was discovering I was curious like am I the only one who cares about this shit like and so I would go up to when I would meet people I would literally sometimes ask them so instead of the, how are you? So I would go in the, the first introduction sense, like, what's your purpose? What's your ambition? And people go like, why are you asking me? I don't want to know. I actually asked that question myself. I put it away in a closet. Don't ask me that shit. And I realized, okay, some people don't want to talk about that. That was one experience I had. And then, but often that also led to when you have that instant connection with people who are already on that level. And I love that when you get to that core right away. So I've, I've had that experience. And then I've also done uh, where it's also superficial, but I cannot, I cannot bear that too long where I don't, where I, I, I don't show that full part of myself. I've done that as well. And that doesn't really resonate because that's like, shying away from who I am. It's being afraid to show who I am. So now what I'm doing is I am way more fluid and flexible and intuitive with it. I meet someone and it, it just depends. It's I don't have a rule that I always do the small talk first or go deep into it right away. It's very uh, flexible. So for some reason today with you, I said I, I went into it right away, right? Then And I also learned what you mentioned, that some people are willing to go deep, but they want to go on a first date. They want to just meet in public first. They don't want to get intimate right away. They want to have that small talk about the weather. So I'm, I'm learning to be more flexible with it. And depending on how the conversation goes and flows, that we can get into it. And sometimes people really avoid the deep topics and stay on the small talk, talk small surface level and then I respect that and yeah that's so that's my approach it's not always the small talk first not always going to the deep dive from the get-go and but being more flexible and intuitive to whoever I'm in relating with and in conversation with yeah I think with that approach you are just you're uncovering the the golden nuggets E more easily because you let the other person breathe first and you connect and then because I I end up always with conversations like this like everywhere it's so fascinating you know I was teaching 
at the professional school um, for food technologists for 12 years. And then once I had lunch with the guy who taught the, the gardeners how to deal with the, the saw, what the chainsaw, you know, like a real, like a chainsaw guy. And we had lunch and I liked him, but I never, ever would have thought that we will talk about numerolo numerology. What's the, the number? Numerology, 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 numerology. And <laughs> about, you know, it was like, whoa, he, he afterwards sent me a, a reading about my name and the, the, the numbers of my name, of my birth name. Like, okay, I never ever would have guessed that the chainsaw guy will be like, you know, a, a professional in numerology. Numerology. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I like that. You know, like, you never know. Maybe somebody starts with the weather, but don't underestimate some people. So, like, going with the flow, like you said, I think that's, that's very cool. And, uh, yeah, it's so fascinating to me to, to, I always say I'm actually not a coach. I'm, I'm a witch, but not everybody knows that. And, and um, yeah, sometimes I'm more open about it. And sometimes I'm, I'm just the unicorn, colorful rainbow mountain, Swiss mountain girl. And that's, that's okay. Like, yeah. But yeah, I think if you don't talk about the deep stuff, that doesn't mean that it was a shallow um conversation maybe if the connection is here like yeah we can we can play with that you said you you had you kept your answer who are you very 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 short so would you share some more where you're where you're living and what you're doing or or who is around you or is that private and i totally respect that but um you were like diving directly into the other direction yeah uh i i kept it short because i can make it very long i so like that's long. I, said, I can i we great. can we can start there if you if you are willing to share i would love to hear more about you i'm an open book uh open spirit so definitely all right then one of the most complex things about me is you know people uh we we try to make sense of the world by putting things in boxes and 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 judging it like oh i understand this you fit here you fit there right now uh i i i was born and raised in suriname that's a small country in south america it's in between the guyanas above brazil currently i'm i'm here i'm there i'm here i'm there here right now and i've also lived in holland for 10 years now that country it's a very diverse ethnic ethnic group different cultures you have um uh migrants from multi-generation migrants from india from china from java the island of indonesia from african descent a few you a few dutch people europeans you have a brazilian culture here and now it's even expanding Cuba, cubans are coming in people from venezuela now i my dad is uh from Chinese Asian descent. My grandma and grandpa, they came to Suriname, they took the boat. And so that's part of my lineage. And then my mom is from Colombia. So she has that's that's why I, my name is Ramiro. If you look at me, I'm I look very Asian. So people assume either I'm either Chinese or I'm from the Philippines. Right. And then so that's so people can't really get me into a box because and then when I'm in Holland. The, the pronunciation in Dutch, there's a big difference in accent. Like you have uh, in English, you have the US accent, you have the UK accent, you have the Australian accent, you have the European accent, you know? And then what happens is then they hear me speak Dutch in a Surinamese accent. And in Holland, people assume mostly that you're, if you're from Suriname, you're either from African descent or from Indian descent, depending on which uh which city you're in so like they go like what you're not black but you're not indian so how come you're from suriname and then to make things even more complex <laughs> living there for 10 years i really started to adopt the dutch pronunciation the vocabulary because they're different phrasing right now then when i 
right now I'm back in Suriname. So now I'm realizing I speak Dutch with a Surinamese accent, but I use a Dutch vocabulary, Dutch words, Dutch phrasing. And I realize that people are getting confused. Like, wait, wait, you have a Surinamese accent, but you talk a little bit weird. And, uh, and, and sometimes when English, like, are you from the US? Because you have such an American accent. And that was where uh, I learned English growing up watching Disney Channel and Cartoon Network and like watching Mowgli, Jungle Book. That's how I picked up English and playing basketball. I had some friends from the US. So I had all these different influences, all these different cultures. And that just gets morphed into what in culture studies is called the cross-culture generation or cross-culture kids or uh, you know, um, third culture kids is when you have two or more cultures that get fused and then a new culture arises that doesn't fit in any of them. So people always get their wires fried when they meet me. And <laughs> to add another layer, I have a very well-developed feminine side. So people sometimes confuse, and with the long hair I have at the moment, people sometimes confuse me to say, I remember there's one woman coming up. She's just staring at me. And I, I was, I was on my phone and then I feel someone staring at me. I look up and she says, are, are, are you a man or a woman? And I start laughing <laughs> and she says, Oh, I see you Adam's apple. I know you're a man. I'm like, okay, good. So even in voice, people get confused. Are you a man or are you a woman? So who am I? People always try to put me in boxes. That's why I say I'm this creative spirit in this human vessel, right? And I'm not defined by my culture, by my parents, by my patient, by my relationships, by my age, by my gender, by uh, my, 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 my art. Uh, that doesn't define me. So who am I? I'm a creative spirit. So I love getting that. to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's kind of the weather conversation is this whole who, uh, uh, where are you coming from? And your parents, that's like the weather conversation. And you are, I'm a creative spirit. Deal with it. And um, <laughs> the boxes are beneath me. I don't need boxes. I love that. And yeah, it's kind of, I think we're just still cavemen and cave women, and we need simple, simple things to understand this world. And the world is just not simple anymore. And and that's that's overwhelming. I, you know, I don't know where I read that, but but if you arrive in a new country and the first two or three or four people are rude, you're like your brain is like, ooh, this country, rude people everywhere. And then you look for them and you will, you will um uh have have the, the 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 proof that all people in this country are rude our brain is just not made for the complex world but the spirit is so yeah for <laughs> for our <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think they they had to think about lots of things too but they always had to look out for the danger and um and survive and and luckily, a lot of people on this planet don't have to look out for the tiger. What, what's the, the, the tiger with the long, long um, teeth? Saber you know? tooth. Saber tooth. Saber tooth. Okay, I'm learning English with you. Sable tan tiger, is it in, in uh, German? Maybe you understand it because you, you speak Dutch. So, yeah, that's always the good example. Like, we don't need to look out for, for this animal anymore. Hmm. Our topic in November is about vision, vision, I always pronounce it wrong, vision, and I love to look back in November and not at the 31st of December, because then it's too late to, to still do something in, in this year. So 2021, how did you start it, it and, and how do you, do you plan your year? Or do you have like a vision, vision for your year, or an intention, or just how do you, how do you get into your new year, and what did you implement, or what did you achieve, or how do you celebrate that it's now November? We have still two full months, or may, it's now the eleventh of of November, eleven eleven. I love these numbers. 
but yeah, we have still time. And for me, every day is precious. So, and, and there is a lot of possibilities in, in one and a half month. So what do you say about that? Start of the year, planning, no planning, going with the flow. What's your take on that? I have tried and implemented different strategies into planning from planning the whole year to planning every hour of the week and every day. And again, here it's going to just experimenting with different extremes. And for me personally, I find that um, one of the things coming back to spirit, having that clear uh, session so that you know the spirit level and energy level, emotion level and the body level, what is most suitable for me, for you. And so planning the year, I would plan like the three month blocks and then I would stick with it for two, three, four months. And then poof, I would divert because things change. So I stopped planning the whole year because then I, yeah, after a few months, I stopped using the calendar. Then I switched to the, the ones I love the most is the, the three month plan or the 12 week plan or the 90 day plan, right? So that's kind of how I'm shifting towards. And then, but that, that only have it as a, a broader vision, like a, a bigger intention to the details because things can still flow and be flexible. I know some people teach to plan out like three, six, 12 months in advance, every little detail, and then they're still flexible. But to me, it sounds like such a waste of energy to plan the details, which are 80%, 90% sure, certain to change. And so that's, that's kind of how I look at it vision i have a longer term vision and that this is, i've had since i was well it was inspired since i was eight years old when i had, i looked up at the sky and i asked why am i here what am i doing i don't love this what's the purpose of all of this that's what really got me started on thinking long term so i when i say longer term the next hundred years for me what will that be right what does that look like for me what's that purpose for me. I call that the creative in the body, but for me specifically, what does that look like, right? In the, in the physical tangible terms. So that's something that I'm always, I have some answers and I'm, and I'm always learning and rediscovering that. And I know what it, what it is for, for that lifetime, for this lifetime, but to have it into the details plan I'm sure yet. I, 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 I just look at, okay, what's the, the next year? What's the next three months? And also the, the, the year intention, I have it with the longer vision. So it's still very vague. And, but then the three months I, I plan a little bit more detail, still very flexible. So the year 2021, I started, this is so exciting. I started with and I had started planning this in uh, November and December of 2020. And that was to develop my clairvoyant abilities. And I started in January and that's a two-year program. But actually, the first part is only a two-year program. And after that, there's a teacher program. So that means the five next five years in that area, I'm all set. I know what I want to do, right? So that's one area. That's my own personal skill development, spiritual development. So I'm so focused on that. And that helps me to focus when people send me, Ooh, look at this masterclass. Ooh, look at this, this, this meditation, this rampage meditation. Uh, Ooh, look at this, 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 this training. I'm very clear. They're probably all good. They might benefit, but for now I don't need it because it's a distraction. I have about 40 books, 40, 50 books of which I've read maybe 10. And I know like another 10, I'm definitely going to read in my lifetime, but I see that it's going to, it's, it's going to, I don't need it right now. I don't need a new angle, a new perspective. So I'm actually going to give them away. And then when it's, when I'm ready to read them again, I'll buy them again. So that's, that's, I have really longer term visions and planning so that uh, I, I, I can stay focused. And then in other areas, so one thing that changed only the past year was I was still in Holland trying to figure out if I would stay there or not. And what happened? I got this clear intu intuition. My, 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 my inner voice said, 
you need to go to CERN and clean up some stuff. So that's why I came back to CERN for a few months. And then uh, there's, there's other, the, the, that voice, same voice also said, you need to head to LA, go west. So next year I'm already heading. I know I want to go to LA. So for example, what I've got planned for 2022, I know I'm going in that direction. I'll stop in the island of Curacao. I have a brother there, going to settle, set up maybe a home base there for a few months and then start heading towards LA. And for travel, I know I want to be in Colombia for three to six months to improve my Spanish, but it's, I have that intention, but it's not planned in the calendar yet. I'm just being flexible in when I create the space for that. So that's kind of how I plan. And one thing that I'm really doing is December is a busy month growing up for me, you know, for people with holidays, funds and party for me, December means work because my mom used to be a yeah, small, she's a small business owner, entrepreneur. And so during Christmas break, so I would have to sell fireworks. So all the other kids were out shooting firecrackers. I was selling the firecrackers to them. And I didn't, so yeah, so I didn't really enjoy it at the time, but I am grateful for it. And then always I've had those. And then uh, on the other part, when my mom shifted into cosmetic hair extensions, you know, women want to have long, beautiful hair for the holidays. So it's a very busy month. So I would help her out a lot. So December became a month of work for me growing up and I'm shifting now where it's really a month for me, the whole month of December is for me not to have parties, not to work, just to slow down and rest and rejuvenate and reflect and reflect on the past year. And then the coming, I look at the three month periods mostly or three to four months period. So for example, I have set my intentions for in last month, uh, in, since in December for like um, in September for like September, October, November, looking at those three months, knowing that December I'll be taking a break. And then, yeah, I already know I want to be traveling. So got to prepare for that. And I haven't planned that into the details yet. The closer I get to it, uh, the more I'll plan into it. Yeah. And I think that you plan the whole year. It's just, it's just not possible. Like, honestly, nobody can do that. Of course you can set like events and you will, you will do them then if not something else happens, but um, I love the 90 days. I, I once had a, uh, I hired a coach for a whole year and we did always these 90 months and it was such a beautiful process with lots of space to breathe. And I want to get into that again now for the rest of 2021. I always have to think about <laughs> year's number and really do that in 2022 because um, yeah, the, the combination of planning and having goals, but being flexible, I think that's very, very beautiful because you, you started your podcast um lately right and and that was like an idea like this or again uh intuition talking to you or did this i want to have a podcast appear on your intention for the whole year already last year <laughs> definitely not all right so what happened uh i had a i was working with a client i helped her with her story we finished up and then she wanted to continue and she wanted to do a podcast and she wanted support on that. And I can definitely help her on that. And then I remember, hey, I had a checklist laying around somewhere. So I, I, I look for that. I, I, I reached out to a friend who has a podcast. So she connected with me with uh, her teacher who heard the podcast progress. And then I got connected with him. I saw how he uses a specific business for podcasts. I thought, this is genius i am going to implement this and i said you know what i'm gonna do a podcast that's how in the moment i decided to do a podcast and there was this other thing that came because a few months before that my inner voice said to me you need to start creating and publishing content again and i didn't act upon it right away i said okay i hear you let me just figure out which format which platform and then when the podcast, I saw the podcast possibility, I was like, 
definitely going to do that as my creative outlet. So what happened, that inspiration and intuition and all that synchronicity happening, within one week, I had the trailer done. I had the cover art done. I had six guest episodes already recorded to publish. I had the description. I had the, the intro. I had everything done. I had the text setup done. I could just hit publish right away within one week. And that's, for me, it's super fast. And, you know, in the past, I've had a lot of, oh, I want to do this. And then I, I don't execute. Oh, I want to do that. And then I don't execute, right? And then this one was like, boom, 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 boom. Spirit, energy, body. Spirit, energy, body. And just going through that creative cycle. So that, that's what happened with the podcast. And then here's the irony. After launching the podcast, right, I, it's, it's, all, it's all nice and done. What happened? Oh, but I still waited two more weeks to really publish it and launch it because I had, I had already set a date for August 23rd. That was my birthday. I had already set it. So, and I gave those two weeks for promotion, you know, because there's a creation process, but there's also the promotion process part to it. And what happened was that client who wanted to work, uh, help with her podcast, she's like, can we start next month? Can we start later? So we, ha we, ha we haven't started yet. We, ha we didn't even continue with that, which was the initial inspiration for Nudge to do that. That business strategy that I thought was so genius, I still think it's genius, but it just doesn't resonate with who I am and what I want to do for the show. So I'm not even implementing that. So I'm like, the two reasons that inspired me and motivated me to do a podcast ended up not being implemented. And I'm like, now I podcast and I'm doing that. So that is uh, that's how that happened. And I also said, you know what? I'm doing going to do 89 days. And why 89 is because I am born in 89, and I just like to play with numbers like that. It, and it's just below the 90 day, you know. And so I'm doing like 89 days of um, daily solo episodes, daily content, daily creation creative expression, sharing my stories, sharing my insights. And then, and then when that's done, December, I'm going to take a break. So that's uh, actually my break will start right after U.S. Thanksgiving. It will start on the last episode will be on November 26th. And then I take a break from there. And then I'll see uh, in January if I'll start. I'm honestly, I don't know what's going to happen when I finish. I might continue and still take a break. I'll, we'll see what happens. I, I have no clue. My intention right now is to take a break, but depending on how creative juices flow, I might just continue on with that. And that's just the beauty of being self-employed, right? You don't have to ask anybody. You don't have to sign a contract. You can just decide yourself. I love that so much because I changed things up after summer break. You know, Mika, my daughter, was in summer break for five weeks. And this is kind of one of the year's rhythm, this summer break, because I was teaching. I had these five weeks of vacation all my year, uh, all my lifelong, not, not all my lifelong, but nearly and then it's kind of a new year feeling like after summer break, let's do something different. And now we have these monthly topics, which I love to add to the joy conversation because for me, vision and mindset and habits, they are so connected to joy or we can create joy with being very intentional about these three things. And, and now, um, yeah, you, you, you talk about... I do it this way, but I might do it differently. I love that. This freedom is gold. That's really my, my everything. I mean, with eating, you know, I, I eat mostly really oh, 95, 99% plant-based, but I didn't sign a contract. If I want to eat the honey, honey on my bread, honey from Swiss bees, which are happy bees or whatever, you know, I don't. I don't have to ask anybody. I, I don't own anybody something, just me. And I love that. I, this freedom makes me so happy. And of course, I have like expectations within me, which I want to fulfill for my, for my clients. You know, like I don't want to do things differently every month. That would be just simply confusing. 
but yeah, like in a year I can do things completely different or stop doing this or I love this freedom. And you are even moving. I'm a little bit jealous of that. And then I'm listening to you and I feel like, oh, I want to go to all these countries too. And then I'm like, no, I'm kind of boring. I say boring in a very loving way. You know, I like to be here in my office. I like to be at home and in the mountains. And then I like some adventures. Like I would love to go to Japan, back to Japan, you know, to see my my family-in-law. They are so, so such beautiful people so i admire you for your adventurous plans and then reflecting it's just so good to reflect and not be jealous 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 but inspired but then feeling like oh i like to stay in zurich that's that's best for me all right two, two things I, I definitely uh have an insight on that traveling and do i all um all travel oh, but i love this i definitely have an insight on that but also on the food part so it was back in 2011 when i first switched to vegan and i started vegan and i also cut out the onion and garlic family because um that is not so helpful for the the higher level chakra for the into for the higher level intuition it's good for the lower chakras and the lower intuition but not so helpful for the high the higher ones and so i cut all of that out and for my family and the culture locally that food and meat is like religion <gasps> you won't eat meat are you, what are you gonna eat yeah they were like what's wrong with you and they they saw i could never do that and <laughs> I could not, I could just no longer eat meat. I couldn't chew it. I couldn't swallow. I didn't. Me too. Like I it didn't. was just, it was just in, in, in Japanese, it was not my Japanese word. It's owari, owari, owari. Owari, 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 owari. Owari. I love that. <laughs> so, so, but then people have a different um, rules for themselves and they project that onto you. And that's how they have that converse, have conversation. And I started off vegan, but then uh, at one point, like sometimes the cheese and the cakes, I would then start that again and then happy vegetarian, still consume eggs and, and cheese, etc. cetera. Uh, then I stopped that again because it didn't really resonate. And so went back to vegan. And now recently I've been getting back into eating, I, but I probably overdo it on the eggs because currently I'm sometimes I eat like six eggs a day. So... <laughs> I kind of go into these extremes. So probably after this period, I'm going to have another five years of not eating eggs no more. So that is a, so definitely resonate with you on that, on being flexible. You said that intention of who you are, but it's not a rule. It's not a constriction. It's just what resonates with you and who you choose to be. And if that needs to change, then you're very flexible and can change that we want. So that's, I love that. I resonate with that. I get it. And now, on the travel part, you know, a lot of people on the, on the whole socials with they share so on the traveling and making that such a hype on the adventures, it looks so cool and fun, but honestly, it's so draining and I do enjoy traveling much. I love routines. I love having a stable place. I love having uh, a, 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 a weekly thing that's set and where I always go and people I always meet. I love that because you know that song? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. So that is something I enjoy. But at the same time, I am, you know, from the uh, Asian elements philosophy, the eight words fortune telling in, from, from Asia, from China. I am what they call a water element and a small water element. So you have the yin yang, big, small. So I'm small, what? No, wait, I'm small wood. I'm small wood. So that means that one of the things, uh, what you can interpret from that, I don't have deep roots. I can easily move from place to place. Now, where you have someone else who's also a wood element, but is a big wood. So not small, big, the, the, the other, I don't know which is yin, which is yang, the other one. 
then they love the, what works for them is to be very grounded into one place and not move every year, every three to six months. And that is for me also traveling that much. It's draining. So when I say travel, I mean, like I stay one place three to six months. And then if it's vacation, I can stay a week, a few days. If that's vacation time. That's, I don't see that as like the full-time nomad. So that being a full-time nomad, that is not sexy to me. People are trying to promote that, trying to sell that. And then someone who is a big tree, for example, which they resonate, like you resonate with being grounded in one place in their home, they get sucked in. Well, maybe I should also be traveling a full-time nomad, but no, you got to do what's right for you. And for me, it happened to be that leads me to traveling. But even in Suriname, I'm here for eight months. That's not just a shorter time it's it's eight months almost a whole year right so that's uh that's my little insight on the traveling you got to do what's what's right for you so because if you want to live in the place where, where you, you grew up you, you know everybody and it's your routine and that and that you just thrive in that it just lights you up it brings you joy then that's what you gotta do so that's my little insight on traveling and comparing can you say this eight element thing again? I, I never heard about that. It, it's called um, eight fortune telling. So what they do, it's kind of, it's not numerology. It's like astrology because you have the, the numerology. They're like the feminine and masculine energies, right? The yin yang. So you have numerology and then you have ast astrology. And eight words fortune telling is basically from uh, astrology point of view. So what they look at, they look at reborn, the month, date, and time. So your birth date and the time. And then you nowadays you have you have the algorithms, you just fill it in, and then it will show you eight words. And from those eight words, you have you can have so many interpretations. And it really takes a, a master intuitive to interpret that for you. So I only know some basics. From that comes which element are you? So the elements in in that philosophy in feng shui are wood, water, fire, earth, and metal. And air earth, is that? No, that's like Ayurveda. That's okay. where air comes in. <laughs> it, it, yeah. So so depending on which which, which um, school of wisdom you 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 you're, you're incorporating, it's different elements. So within this one, it's again earth, fire, water, wood, and metal. Right, so that's within the feng shui, the Asian, the eight words fortune telling. So those are the five words, and then from that you can have what your one of the five elements that's most dominant, and then you have uh, certain elements that are, that are the weakest. And so that's getting into a deeper level, and then you also have your dominant: are you yin or yang, or are you big or are you small? And that really makes a big difference if if we look at the example of traveling. And that is the reason why I wear black because I am a small wood. That means, that doesn't mean I've got small wood. That means that for me, the water element is very, very beneficial and earth element I should avoid. So in terms of colors, water, water colors are black and blue. So that's why I chose to wear mostly, I almost only wear black. And the colors for me to avoid are the earth tone. So that's like the yellow, the brownish colors, the earth colors, but brown can sometimes be wood. So it's all about interpretation and I feel great in black. So, so oh, <laughs> yeah. interesting. And I feel best in bright colors, pink, blue, like really the rainbow, but bright, no pastel creamy things like bright and shiny so interesting i need to check that out so you could do you could do a reading for me or or you you would um uh... i could do basics i could uh, I, I need to have your date and time your birth date and time and i could get at least that or which which element are you i could tell you what your eight words are but the interpretation that goes beyond my current insight on that and then i could tell you which element you are and uh which 
ying or yang, big or small. And from that, derive, for example, the well, you already know your colors, they're bright, but then maybe have some more nuances in the tones if, if yeah, that's, that's, that's what I can help you with. But like the big tree, I'm a big tree for sure. And you well, know, may, but- maybe not, maybe your earth element. Okay. Okay. But you know, when, <laughs> yeah. when you say I, I always, I mean, I wanted to go to Japan my, all my life. And then I went there for a, for an internship um, 20 years ago and I arrived and I was, it was like coming home, like, hello, I'm back. Um, when I really stepped on the, on the land and um, I felt so at home and I learned the language very quick. Um. And I want to go to Japan always. And then I have a real big heart connection to America and to Finland. I've never been there, but like that's that's the closest from from Switzerland. And then that's about it. I love to go to Italy. I love to go to Greece, but I never have to go to Australia for being happy, you know, before I die, like the, the bucket list feeling. Or to Bali or to the or to Yeah, and I mean Peru. I would love. I would love to go there, but I the, the urge to go was really Japan was the biggest. Yeah. And um, having a home base, that's so big for me. Like you said, that the nomad thing, that's not for me. I love it for one week, maybe two weeks. And then I like to cook myself. But um, in Japan, I was I was staying at one place. I had my, my home stay family. And the routines, you know, in Japan, it's like clockwork. I was going to the same bus every morning for going to work. And I had to walk through a a shopping arcade. And it was like, I mean, there was no smartphone back then, but I would have the chance to film it now. And every morning it looked the same. The same woman ran like ahead of me, like she had to go to the bus. And the same guy on the motorbike crossed, like it was really, you couldn't plan that. And once I, was, I once I was early or late, I don't know. And the couple always in the same dress. I was like, what is wrong with you two? You always wear the same every day. It's just like a little creepy. And then I saw them opening a shop, you know, the shop, um, the, 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 the shutter. I was like, oh, you own, you run a shop together. That's why you, you, you have the same clothes on, not the same clothes every day, but they had the same design every day. So funny. (laughs) I loved it. I loved it. And I only had my old manual camera and I had to pay for each picture, you know, on film. So I was um, not able to capture this movie like, Every day is the same scene. It was so fascinating. And I loved it. I'm so in love. And at the bakery, you said, like, they know my name. You know, I didn't have my purse with me. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And this is my lunch. Like, yeah, you can pay tomorrow. And my then boyfriend, now husband, he was like, what? They let you pay the next day? That's not common in Japan. But I mean, I looked like the, the we say, the colorful dog like the rainbow dog in, in German, there is this term, like you are so remember, rememberable, is that a word? Memorable. Memorable, memorable because I was one of maybe five foreigners in this city. So they were easy to say, yeah, pay tomorrow. We trust you. <laughs> or know we how find, to find you. you. <laughs> Oh, so cool. And what is pulling you or, or calling you to LA? I mean, that's a big city. That's, um, that's uh, yeah, that's a bold, in my eyes, I don't know. It's a bold, a bold move. Or do you, you don't know? I tell you, uh, I, I, that's my intuition. I don't, the body does not like that. The mind does not like that. I don't love big cities. It's too crowded for me. So I'll be either a little bit north or south of LA, right? So that's one. The second is I was in California in the Bay Area in like San Francisco, LA, San Diego back in 2015 and 2017. And 2015, I visited it with my girlfriend and she was like, hey, Miro, you seem to like it here. Wouldn't you want to live here? I'm like, what? Live in California? 
This is the highest tax state in the U.S. No, so so U.S. centric. No way. It's good to come to learn to network to grow for these events. But no, I definitely don't want. And I was so resistant. And that was like the first message that I got. Because sometimes you know your intuition sends a message through other people. So that's the first. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And that was big resistance on my end. And then it was in. 2020, where I was learning to be less resistant and more flexible, more open, more easygoing, that I just, it, it just came to me. It just, it, it doesn't make sense logically in my mind and emotionally, but I just knew I had to go to LA. And probably I'm even delayed. I'm kind of beh uh, behind on my schedule of my spirit because that I got that back in 2020. And I'm only planning to go in 2022 because I had other priorities. Like this is probably the second half, maybe it's the second quarter or the second half, second or third quarter of 2022. And we'll see how that goes. But so <laughs> my whole experience and my friction and reaction to you need to, and it's not specifically LA, it's more California. So, but I know like LA area. So either a, a little bit above or a little bit below. Because I also found myself being connected and meeting people online which who are there and then and there's a nine hour time zone difference oh that's so killer to meet up i'm meeting up at 6 p.m my time and they're at like 9 a.m just getting started i already finished my day so it'll help to be more in sync with uh, just being at that physical physical location and yeah even if even though i got that intuition i'm still a bit slow with getting my body back with my intuition so that's my little perspective and my experience on moving to LA and and you're you said like five to six months in uh was it Colombia and then you said um five to six months in another country and I can't remember I'm so sorry so that wouldn't fit into the second quarter of next year like so you would know nope. afterwards or sometimes so, so so this is the thing, uh, Colombia is certain. I want to be there three to six months, but I haven't planned it in. But now I definitely know my next step after Suriname, my next place is Curacao. That's a Caribbean island. Curacao, okay. Yeah, yeah. Curacao. And that is, so that definitely I will go, but uh, I really want to look on how to settle there. So that means I'll three months, but maybe depending on how things go. Uh, so that's the first quarter of 2022. And then the second quarter, it might be LA, it might be Colombia, or I might stay in Curacao a bit longer. I, I don't know yet, but that's still very flexible. So that's why LA can come in the second quarter. But my very next step is Curacao first. And it, I won't stay there for just one month. It will, will pr probably be a, a three month or even six month period. And how do you approach that? Like, just saying that, like, all the questions like where would you live my brain is starting to have a million questions and you're just saying it so casually like you will stay at a friend's house first and then you look for your own place or how do you because you said you want the home base you don't want to just be the nomad how do you approach this you know as an inspiration is if anybody's listening it sounds so easy when you say it so that's so cool to have your insight on it Mm -hmm. Because it's so far away, I'm not stressing on the details. So one of the, I, I do need to prepare some things. I need to prepare like my passports and those those things. Those are things that you need to be need to get done. Uh, I need to like, and also the finances, right? I need to get that all sorted out, allocate funds for that. Thing that I need to do, but like finding a place. Okay, sometimes you need to look months in advance, but. I have a brother who lives there and um, maybe I could stay at his place. It's not always ideal. Still have to figure that out, but it's not relevant now. So I'm just focused on this is what I want, right? That's that's the thing I'm focused on. This is what I want. That's all I'm focusing on. I want that. And it's not even I want that. I don't want to go to California and LA. My spirit tells me this is what I, you want. Well, my spirit's telling me what I want, but like that's on the spirit level, but on the emotional level, uh, level I don't really want that well I'm now coming more in alignment with what my intuition wants so yes I want that I want to go there so that's the only focus and but it's not there right now and so then for 
for for the first quarter of 2022 we'll we'll see and as we get closer into december i'm going to start uh, preparing so the months of november december uh i'm i'm preparing more for that and so that's that's how i approach it and finding a place i mean you got airbnb so you need you need resources and funds so focus on getting that and that also opens up so many opportunities for um f- just hire uh, renting a place airbnb there's so many things out there right and so there's always always a way and there's no point in asking those questions now that you're not gonna solve right now where am i gonna live well i have the option of my brother if that's not an option just figure it out right and so there's for example one thing i like stationary things i don't have a laptop so i have a a, a small computer but with a big screen that is not handy to travel with so that's something that i have to figure out and solve am i going to cr- take another suitcase and then travel with that i'm going to buy another screen monitor when i get there? i have no clue yet it's i know it's something that i have to figure out but i don't stress about it because it's not relevant right now it's something for the future and when it becomes relevant i'll address it then and there because you know, growing up, I, uh, I saw people uh, stressing about problems that are not here yet and always stressing about it and never. And that's what I learned growing up. That's what I modeled. And I've uh, luckily I've grown from that and I realized, hey, don't help nobody to stress about things you're not going to solve today. So <laughs> that's my that's- little bit what I got to say. Yeah, but that's so, so perfect for this month topic, you know, having a vision. I know what I want. That's the whole first long chapter of my book. Find out what you want. That's the first step. And you can have a big vision for for your whole life, but also for, for more like next year, as you say. But you don't have to know all the little moves yet, but feeling like, ah, this is what I want. That's so so empowering and gives you a lot of ideas and the inspiration and then if you on the way find out that you don't want that anymore you just change your way because we can and and this whole thing i mean in my my village where i grew up there was our neighbor i loved him very much he often worked in our house he was um a builder you know building walls in my my parents had reformed the old house so there was a lot of tearing down walls and and building up new ones and he was always coming over a very gentle soul and he was that doing this job for his whole life and he was really happy about that you know very very happy builder is it the builder i don't know if that's the correct word but just like yeah he, he was in construction and construction, in construction yeah yeah. In he was an Italian man, and in Italian, it's muratori means you build walls. And yeah, Mr. Bonandi, Signore Bonandi, I love him. He's dead now, he died when I was, I don't know, 20 or something, so over 20 years ago. But I still remember his content feeling of just doing what he learned to do. But I love that we are more free now we're, we're we can we can choose and turn and the jobs my daughter will do in 20 years are not even existing now so why do we stress about oh she has to be good in mathematics and like no she's not interested so just let her be please ah <sighs> there's so much to yeah i love your approach like know what you want and then figure it out but don't stress over all the details right now. And that's the perfect um, intention for looking back at 2021, but also looking out in, in to 2022. I will do a whole five-day retreat, online retreat on, on creating your vision for 2022, but not like the detailed plan, but like what, what do I, how do I want to feel? Like what do I want to experience? And then you have different op- Um, possibilities to feel that way if you want to feel adventurous you can go climbing like one hour ride a a train ride away or you can go zip lining in in south america you know you have different possibilities but the feeling of feeling adventurous if that's important to you that's like a compass for for building out your 22 
2022 year plan. So <laughs> yeah, I love I love more holistic approach to planning too. Yeah. Thank you so much for all these insights. I always end my podcast with what is the message to the whole world of Ramiro? I mean, you have a mic, we are online and the whole world can listen to your wisdom now. What's your message? My message would be that you are a creative spirit and all your creative spirit wants to do is be fully expressed through all the bodies, through your energy body, through this physical body. That is your gift to the world and we deserve your gift and it's your obligation, no pressure, your yeah. obligation <laughs> to share your gift, your light, your spirit with the world. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your energy and your, yeah, you're, you're just so inspiring just to listen to you to see you please everybody if you listen that on on a, a podcast channel go and watch the the video on my blog at choicemycompass.com slash blog or um on youtube because it's fun to see you move and express yourself with your whole body thank you so much ramiro and all the best for everything you are planning and doing in the future cool thank you bye this was so inspiring i mean ramiro from suriname who lived in the netherlands and speaks like the, the american english which he learned on disney channel i love international connections as you know and um, I'm, I just love these inspiring stories about what, what is possible. We can, I mean, Ramiro's, Ramiro's travel plans, they are so big and bold and you can do that too. But if you want, and this, this choice, this feeling of choice, I love that. That's so inspiring. And that's why I want to invite you to a five day free challenge in the end of November, at the end of November, 25th, 5th, until 29th. This is hard for not English native speakers. So just in the end of, of November, the last weekend and before and after a five-day challenge where we think about 2021. And the a little, a little offensive title is, what did I achieve? So at joyismycompass.com slash what did I achieve, you can sign up for this free challenge and we will look back on, on all the, the month past, the, the 11 months, which are history already to learn the lessons, you know, to find out what went well and what didn't. And then for for next year we can learn so much by looking back and not looking back by like yeah this was bad and this was bad by asking meaningful and and interesting questions about you and your thoughts and and your feelings so that you can learn from this year for next year this is a free challenge with a pop-up Facebook group. I love to connect and to comment and that we can really get to learn each other. It's an international group with um, Swiss, Swiss people and Swiss people who, who can't write English or don't want to, they can write in high German. And then there is this, this super cool translation function. So you can meet very, very wonderful people from Switzerland. And, you know, in the Joy Academy, we have a mixed group too, English and German, and everything is, is double. So uh, you, don't, you don't miss anything. You can have everything in English. And, and I just love to combine my two, my two languages of my heart. You know, Swiss German is, um, is, yeah, my mother tongue. And I don't want to miss out on, on doing my business in my own language. But I went to 
kindergarten in America when I was four years old. We lived in Iowa City and, and English is dear to my heart too. So it feels so good to combine these two languages and to, to do it double, but kind of the same in the same um, in the same space so that you can meet each other. These two worlds which um, have so so different languages should meet. But it's not about language, it's about you and your 2021. And then, of course, I will invite you to join me for a five-day online retreat in January, where we are focusing on planning and also envisioning 2022, and also the big vision, you know, for your whole life. And this is a paid retreat, which costs 333 Swiss francs, or you invest in the, into the Joy Academy, that's 888 Swiss francs, which is about the same amount in dollar. It depends on the, on the, on the raising or falling of the dollar, but it's a whole year full of goodness. It's the whole buffet of self-development just ready for you to dive into the topic where you want to improve your life or change your life or where you are not satisfied or where you want to go on a different level. If it's because of your body, movement, food, decluttering or getting rid of, rid of old beliefs and old, old um, programming, everything is laid out for you. So the online retreat in January is just happening for all the Joy Academy members or for the paid guests. So you can decide. But first, check me out at the end of November and sign up at joyismycompass.com slash what did I achieve? Thank you so much for signing up because that will be great fun to connect and learn and, and think and meditate together in this pop-up Facebook group. Sign up and you will get all the information for that and tell all your friends and I will be so happy to have you there. Take care and see you there. Bye. <laughs>